Today we'll have a couple of games to go over. We'll do that first. And uh, the rest of the time I have, I have some games that I like to show from the US Championship that I played. If we have time, we'll do it today. If not, the rest of the week I'll be here. So you're welcome to come and see those lectures where I'll be explaining. You've probably seen the games, but there might be a lot of details that you didn't see yet, you know, once I start explaining what was going on actually during those games. So I recommend to come if you can. Uh, let's take a look at this game. This is uh, okay, played by Bill here. And let's see. E4, E5. Knight f3, knight f6. So everybody here, should, let me ask you, do you know the name of this opening that Block is trying to play? What's the name of this opening? Petrov. Uh -huh. game? Russian game. A Russian game, also known as the Petrov. Okay? So two names. You know, if you're in Russia, probably they will say Russian game. But you know, it's the same thing. Petrov. I played before as well. This opening. So knight takes e5, d6, and here. Knight f7, interesting, very interesting um, uh, sacrifice of the knight. This is a gambit and played by Alexei Shirov. He had this position and he played this knight f7, very interesting. You know, of course, uh, the most common response here is knight f3, and knight takes c4, and here white has several options. He can play d4, he can play knight c3, so he has some options he can do. But knight f7 just basically eliminates all that, and now it's going to be a concrete position. King takes f7, d4, g6, bishop g5, activating the bishop, very good, h6. Uh, let me ask you a question. Bishop g5, it's OK, it's possible. but. Which other move looks quite natural to play here? To maintain the control of the center here that we would like to do? Knight c3. Knight c3. What was, what was the reason that you didn't go knight c3? Was there anything specific or? I haven't seen g6. I don't know theory very well. Uh -huh. I haven't seen g6, so I was thought I was going to play the bishop there anyway. So I didn't think there was anything. Okay, yeah. Uh, the, the, the only problem is uh, the e4 pawn still remains vulnerable. And then he can try to play this h6, g5 on you, which either you have to give up the bishop on f6, or either you have to go back to g3. So you don't have too much choice there, you know? Either you retreat or what to do, question is, you know? So that's why I think it's probably, you don't want, you want to keep all the pieces, because when you sacrifice material, it's very important. If you're aggressive attacking player, you sacrifice a piece for two pawns. You want to keep as many pieces on the board, because that way you have more attacking resources. If you start exchanging, then you're going to have less pieces, so less, less threats. So it's very important to keep all, all the pieces. That's why I think 93 is preferable to uh, make sure that we know our center is protected, and he cannot force us any way to exchange the bishop. Okay. So you play bishop g5, h6. Bishop c4 check, king g7, bishop h4, and now we see this idea, bishop e7. Wow, that's a bit strange decision. I think he, he was afraid of something, and he didn't play the proper move. OK, black to play. What is the best move in this position? To try to take advantage of this bishop maneuver that white did. What's the best thing to do here? g5. Questioning the bishop now. Bishop is questioned now. What to do? He has to go back on g3, otherwise it's hanging and just takes the pawn. Central pawn is gone. And now I'm not sure if we have enough. Because now white has only a single pawn, which is just not gonna be enough compensation. Okay? In h5, you mean? Yeah. But then, OK, I was thinking about this, but that weakens the e5 square, so there might be this tactic. Yeah, but I think just simply queen f6, protecting that, and black will develop his pieces and uh, will probably be up a piece. Not much white has here. Huh? Doesn't that trap the knight? Well, I always have knight g3 ideas, yeah. so. 
not in danger to get trapped here. So like F3, I can take, take, and just 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 continue developing. Yeah, just just not enough. You know, there's just not enough in the position here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So knight takes. But it's it's a bit strange that he played this H. It's just, yeah, he played the right moves, and then suddenly at the crucial moment he's not doing this. He's doing this move. Uh, your opponent plays bishop G e7, castle. Hmm. Yeah. Why not? Why not protect? You know, to make sure that uh, he can't do too much because uh, that central pawn is important. Without central pawn, it's just probably going to be lost because not enough compensation. But with the central pawn, it's a different story. I mean, in this position, uh, the best move would have been bishop takes f6. And I believe in this position, you would have some decent compensation. Knight goes on c3, then you go castle, then you go f4, e5, launch the attack. You got two central pawns, some lead in development, and you know, he's got a weak king. So you can actually do something here. Okay, but it's 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 important. So no bishop h4 and bishop h4, bishop e7. I think still the best option here is to take on f6. Philosophically, I have a hard time doing that. Yeah. Once I've given up the, the piece, because I feel like I'm giving up my attack. That I guess yeah. the only thing I'm giving compensation is the two center pawns anyway, right? Yeah. Take on f6. Yeah, but but I mean this position castle. Then you go f4, e5. Knight c3, I mean, two pawns is two pawns. And especially you've got those central pawns. That's the idea behind this sacrifice when you give up a knight. Because you give up your knight for just two pawns, but you actually get those central pawns. So that's the difference where you have a 4, e5, and you can attack. OK? OK. So knight f6, you castled, and yeah. And now. Black is going to play this. G5. Bishop G3. Uh, B G5. Bishop G3. Knight takes E4. Now, Queen E2 played. Attacking the knight. Knight takes G3. Knight takes G3 played. Yeah, this this might not, uh, you know, this might not be the most accurate move here. Knight takes g3. I mean, it's a possibility, but I think probably better move is just to play bishop f5. Developing the bishop, and yeah, I mean, he, he, you know, that bishop cannot move anywhere, right? So immediately taking allows f takes g, and then some potential invasion here on f7. Because he still doesn't have development, which will give you some opportunities to try to attack. But here he, he could just continue developing in just normal way and uh, good chances okay, for black to win. But knight g3 was played. f takes g3. Excellent. Opening up this. And now, OK, so here where the notation goes wrong. OK, it says bishop g7, but I probably played bishop f6. You know, he blocked you, yeah? So c3, d6, bishop b3. OK. c6, knight d2, knight a6, and bishop c2. Excellent idea. Bishop comes on c2 with the idea of queen d3, queen g6. Because it's a weak diagonal, right? When there is a weak diagonal, what's the common idea to do? Create a battery. Battery is battery is when you have a bishop and a queen on that diagonal. And usually you want to have the queen in front of the bishop. Because if the bishop goes in, nothing really happens. But if the queen comes in, it could be a checkmate. OK? So it's a very good idea, very nice maneuver. I like bishop c2, bishop, uh, bishop b3, bishop c2. And now he goes queen e1, queen d3, rook h5. Yeah, I think yeah, your opponent didn't play. Uh, didn't play solidly. And now uh, there is a chance. There is a serious chance here. And rook, rook f2 was played. So look, you look at the sack, I'm sure. But is that a good follow-up, though? 
is there a good follow-up? That's the question, because it looks very tempting, but if we don't have anything to follow it up with, then um, probably not enough. Yeah, I'm thinking it's just not enough, unfortunately. Yeah. So you try to double, but that gives him time, no? Yeah. That gives him time to also bring his rook into the game. So, um, Rook f2. Yeah, bishop d7. Rook 1 f1. Rook a f8. Knight f3. White is down a piece, but imagine this is the extra piece that black has. So, I mean, <laughs> you can hardly see the, you know, the existence of that extra piece because it's just stuck in the side of the board. And black is just fighting, you know, to not to get checkmated here. That's why you have a good compensation here, even though you only have a single pawn. Uh, knight f3, rook e8 was played. Wow, that looks like a blunder. That looks like a blunder now. Knight comes in. Excellent. Takes, takes. Knight c7, and e6 was played. Interesting. Op opens up the diagonal. Instead of pushing the pawn, I think you should just play rook f6. Yeah. Rook f6 looks good. Yeah, threatening rook g6. Yeah. I think I think e6 is pretty forced also. But he has this maybe no. Yeah, that's what I was afraid. Of. I thought after e6 it was forced. E6 was forced. Yeah, this this, uh, this should you should win this one too. Queen f5. Now you want to go rook f7 check. And yeah, this sh you should win this now, because rook f7 comes in. But you worked out e6, and you thought you were just winning? I did. If he takes with the bishop, I guess the point is <coughs> check, yeah? Check. King goes here. Should be winning, but um, how? Check. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it feels like it should be winning here. You got uh, lots of material here. Got the rooks, the queen. The bishop and just all of them are just attacking, putting lots of pressure. Okay. All right. Yeah, that looks good, but he played knight e6 and excellent idea here. G4. You always have to look for this kind of ideas, deflecting the defender. Defender is the queen because it's just, it's on the verge, you know, defending f7 and g6. All you gotta do is find the right deflection and it will be a victory. Because now takes, checkmate. So queen cannot go back. So the only thing is to move this, but then you have a check. You have a check here. So opponent played knight f4, and you actually didn't go check here, huh? You played rook f4. How about giving him a little check here? What is he going to do? And then next one, simply take the queen off the board. That's good too, yeah? I think you took with this. But the problem is now he can just do take. Of course, this is a win. Check. Cannot go here. Has to go here. OK, you win the bishop. Yeah, I mean, you, you still win the game. But it's not as, as clean, I think, as this one. This one is just a little cleaner. A little check. And goes back and pick up the queen. Take the queen, and then you will checkmate him with extra queen. Guaranteed. Okay? So don't take any chances. Even in the winning positions, don't take any chances. Okay? That's the, that's the important thing. Very interesting game. 
Very interesting. I mean, it, probably the strategy was risky. And against maybe a little bit stronger and experienced opponent, probably wouldn't work. But uh, I think black just, uh, you know, once black won the pawn, it didn't, didn't play well. If you have a game that you like to submit, we can take a look. We have another game. And uh, what color you are? I was uh, black. You are black. OK, great. Uh, OK, you are black. So let's flip the board. And you are playing against a uh, strong player, right? Yeah, it's 1800. 1800. Good. So against 1800. OK. E4, G6. Interesting opening choice. Uh, why? Why G6? Why not anything like French, Karo Khan, E5, C5? Or um, you like playing this unorthodox line? I do, but uh, I'm starting to look at the French a little bit more. So. OK. Yeah, this is more like a line that you can play without, if you don't know the theory, and you don't want to get cut into some preparation, you can play this. But uh, this is, uh, you know, eventually you probably want to yeah. work work on it and get something a little bit more solid than g6. And what's the problem with this move? If in general, what do you think is the first problem with this move? Aha, it's, uh -huh. it's not fighting for the center. You're giving the center. An opponent will take it. And what's happening in this kind of perk sort of positions, uh, you voluntarily give up the center, and then you start attacking the center. So. You know, if you can play something that you actually fight for the center in the, in the beginning immediately, you'll be better off. Because now you still have to try to equalize if he plays correctly, you know? Which is not going to be easy. Bishop g7, c3. Uh-huh. Not the sharpest way to play against this system, but very sort of conservative way. White is aiming for a solid, solid position without complications. Knight f3, knight d7, bishop d3. E5. Okay. That's fine. DE. Hmm. I'm not sure about this one. I think this move simply makes your task much easier here. You know, you could also just take back with a pawn here. It's not like it's necessary for you to ex ex swap the knights because if you take by this, you can jump in with a knight on here. So it's not like completely necessary to do this. You could do this, but I think perhaps you want to have some more pieces on the board. Mm -hmm. semi. Yeah, now it's semi closed, yes. So take 95, 95, 95, bishop e5. F4, bishop g7, knight d2, knight f6, h3. Uh, bishop d7, any, re any reason why we're not castling? What about the safety, safety of the um, king? I was planning on going the bishop and the queen on castling queen side at this point because he's already started to push the pawns on the on that king side. So you're afraid of him launching an attack on you? I wanted to be flexible. OK, bishop d7, it's OK, it's fine. Bishop e2 or c2 here? Uh, it was e2. It's a bit strange. Yeah, not castling. It's strange why um, it's. What, what, did he tell you why he moved the bishop back? Where was the bishop? Why did he go back? Oh, you yeah, because he wanted to push the uh, g4 pawn, which I didn't get. But. Why don't you just better here? Yeah. Queen c2? I don't know. Yeah, it would be a strange strategy. h5. Wait a minute. I see a very natural move for you. Very natural and a good move for you that this move you must play. It's just asking to be played here. Come on. Activating a piece with a tempo. Activating, developing to a better square. Bishop h6, yeah, but then you place g3 maybe or something. Why did you go bishop d7? What was your idea? Just um, to castle? It was to castle and to uh, put the, the bishop there, yes. Why didn't you just go here and attack? You win a pawn, you know that? I simply attacked this pawn three times now. How can white defend this? Let's analyze this position.
not too many options I can see. Well, push. Well, he can push. He take twice. He has to use his bishop to protect, right? So he either has to go bishop f3 or he has to go to d3. He goes here. And who is going to find a tactical idea that wins a pawn here? Take. Take the pawn, excellent. If you play d5, the problem, he goes e5. He closes it. So you go knight takes c4. For a moment, he may be like, wait a minute, he's giving me a piece. No, but you got an idea behind it. Yeah, not that e5. e5, I'm actually thinking to play maybe even this one, to have even bigger center. Then you take with fe, and then you can even support that with d5. So difference here in this case that you can actually even go like this, take. He goes back here, you can even chase him down from here. And look at that big center you have. And extra pawn. I mean, you could also just castle. Castling would have been fine also, but I think, I think this is just you know, close to be winning for you. you know, because you know, white played strange. You know, if I keep in the king in the middle, not committing, and uh, you know, when opponent does that, you have to take advantage of it. Okay. You can't let the opportunity slip it away. Here, it's, it's asking to be played. You got two pieces pressuring only four. You got to get that third piece out there, right? I mean, this h5 was inaccuracy. OK, make, an, make a note, h5. Instead of h5, bishop c6 immediately. You touch this pawn now. He needs to react somehow. He goes bishop here or bishop here, doesn't matter. Same concept. We take, he takes f5, getting that piece back here. Now you even enjoy the pair of the bishops. Okay. He goes here, try to get you. No. You protect. Okay, winning, winning position here. After queen e7, I think uh, you probably would have won the game because you have better development, up upon, excellent position. H5. I think you're a bit too worried about this g4 idea. You know, but opponent cannot do this kind of things. Look, his king is in the middle. The pieces are not well developed. I mean, this g4, it's never going to work. I thought h5 just kind of kept him tied down and made his pieces like yeah. pointless to get g4. Yeah, but you, you, you give him time to castle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Actually, wait, maybe. Maybe you play bishop e3, eh? Yeah? Oh no, it looks a little bit. Yeah, what move are you on? Wait, wait. I just realized maybe he played bishop e3 in some point because it looked like d3, but now I'm just wondering. Uh, did he play e3 or bishop e? Maybe play bishop e3 here. He did. Bishop okay, so it, I couldn't tell from your, your writing. It was d oh, or yeah. e, so it's e. it's e. Okay, that makes a difference actually. Yeah. That makes a big difference <laughs> because then. He, he's not moving the bishop twice. Yeah. OK, well, yeah, I couldn't tell from the notation. OK, <laughs> take, take, take. So this is, yeah, uh, this is a better version for, for white. Yeah. F4, bishop here still. I mean, you're absolutely fine here. I mean, you're not worse or anything. Bishop e2, queen e7. Queen c2, h5. Yeah, so we got the same position, but he's got the bishop on e3. So the question is, can we do the same? Is it possible? Still, this move needs to be played. Yeah, you, you're activating it, and you're attacking it. You say, one, two, three. You got three on it now. How is he going to react now? Oh, I see a very nice move for you here, even better than this. Ay, 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 very nice move you missed here. Who can find a beautiful move that black has here? Knight e5. Uh, maybe queen e4. But this is just beautiful. Attacking the dark square bishop. He cannot retreat, you win the pawn on f4. So he has to take. And look at this. Pressuring here, pressuring here. 
opening it up. When you got the bishops, you want to open it up. Here, I think you have a huge position here. You can castle, put the rook on e8. I mean, this is, uh, I wouldn't be afraid to say that this is probably close to be winning for you. You know, goes here, you go here, you go here, you go here, you go here. You come in, you come in into his territory. Aye, aye, aye. Nice shot you missed, huh? Nice opportunity here. You put that knight on d5 and have excellent winning chances. Knight on d5, putting pressure. h5, long castle. b5 now. Oh, I don't like this strategy. You push from here, you push from here. Here, bishop d4, it's a very cute idea. Check. Now you lose the queen because if you go to f1, you get fork 93. If you go to d1, you get fork 93. Either way you go, you get fork. Game is over. You win. You didn't see 95? Loose, loose. Huh? When opponent has a loose piece, also known as LPDO, right? Loose piece drop off. So what do you do? <laughs> yeah, loose pieces drop off, yeah? Loose, when you see, opponent has a loose piece, you need to look for those ideas, the tactics, yeah? That's a loose piece. We identify the loose piece, and we got some x-ray here, right? Some possibility. So we have a little bit, you know, we could see this here. Yeah? I mean, it's not that difficult, I think, to see, yeah? You just got to look for it. When opponent has a loose piece, you must look for tactics. Tactics that will help you to exploit that, you know, because uh, if you let him castle solidify, then he'll be happy. You know, but 95 would have give you excellent winning chances. Missed opportunity. H5. Opponent castled. Yeah, this this is where things started to go wrong. And then I don't. I really don't like. Uh, I really don't like this move. B5. Why did you go B5 here? Because I wanted. I wanted to play. Uh, I wanted to push my pawns on that. I understand, but not with the king in the middle. Well, I figured I was going to castle king side, and I didn't want to play um, a5 and then have him play uh, b4. Or, um, what? No, I didn't want him to play a4. I didn't want him to play a4. A4? So you mean here? Yeah. Why would he do this well, for? Well, after I play a5. Wait, wait. Ooh. I like how my bishops are attacking. Okay, but we need to do about this. We can't play with the king in the middle, guys. We can never play with the king in the middle. That's just, just rule number one. Okay, before we do anything advanced, we have to castle. In a position like this, where it's about to explode, he's going to play e5 and open up the position. You can't afford to keep your king in the middle. It's going to open up in a second, and then it's going to be big consequences here. So what was your strategy? You wanted to castle queenside, right? So why change that? Why can't we just castle then? Um, Dropping this one? Well, he doesn't even need to do that. He can just win your pawn. Yeah. You don't have b6. You get checkmated. Oh, What about a6 in Long Castle? It works, just not very aggressive. Mm -hmm. a6 and then castle. Then you put the point on c6 and you start pushing pressure on e4, yeah? Okay. Opportunities, yeah? Opportunities. Yeah, b5, I don't like it. Now it's like. You neither can push castle here, you neither can castle here. You're really stuck now. Bishop f3, c6. Yeah, it shifted. Now it shifted, not to your uh, advantage now. Yeah, you can just play g4 even here. He can even sacrifice the pawn, open up the h file. But he played e5. Knight d5. 
Bishop takes d5, takes knight f3. Now you're back in the game, you know that? Bishop f5, bishop f4. Did you do that? Yes, you did. Uh, you took. You took. I don't know. I don't know about take here. You know. I agree. He makes a, a really bad move. Isn't it? If I have a choice, I put my bishop here. Yeah. Cement that bishop there, you know? Yeah. And now he cannot do anything. That bishop is very strong. And then, you know, you want him actually to take this pawn because you can open up the b-file and, you know, you have huge possibilities here. Just that bishop is strong. You know, that's why you brought the bishop there. You want to just put it on that strong square and then very, very difficult for him to do anything. Okay? Yeah, you play take. Bishop e5, bishop g h6, g4. Excellent. Now you want to take and take. He just blundered. You're winning now. You took this one. h4. You close it down. Huh? You don't want it to open. Yeah, I don't want it to open with uh, the bishop. Okay. Wouldn't it be better to bring this one here? Probably. He makes a... Uh, I can't go there, so... Um, well, why don't you go here, actually? I mean... Uh, I the you, that's a loose piece right? here, right? That's a loose yeah, piece here. So why don't you just go here? Well, you attack the queen. Now he goes away. Show well, me the tactic. Go, yeah, he can't go away. He has, to keep, he has to take the pawn and defend the bishop. Okay. And let it, let it attack. Bishop moves. Take this one. Yeah, okay, you went rook f d8, queen f6. What do you uh, mean queen f6? Queen f3, sorry. Queen f3. Now you play rook a c8, knight e4, queen e5. Yeah. Game over, you won, right? Yeah, I, I lose. You lose? Yeah, I dropped my queen. Oh. He plays g5 and I dropped the bishop. Wait a minute, you lose? I, I dropped my queen here. He plays there and I dropped the bishop. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oof. Three. Three and you're relaxed, yeah? You're relaxed. Yeah, I was. Can you relax? Remember, guys, game is not over until the opponent stops the clock and reaches his hand and says, I resign. Okay? So you remember that. You can never relax. Okay. It's a key. A lot of games are lost and drawn in a completely winning position just because of that reason. One player thinks it's just over and he relaxes and opponent comes back. You know, you you had everything going for you. You got total, totally winning position, <laughs> and just take simple chess. Take, okay, that's it. You know, you, you can pull before. Now you do your fun stuff. Yeah. It goes here. Just you can just play one one simple accuracy. Accuracy protecting it, threatening to take in it.
Yeah, that's what he had to do. Okay, tough game, but a lot of things to learn, okay? This was a very uh, instructive game, I think, because a lot of details, okay? So one thing, it's clear. Do not play moves like h5. Do not play moves like gb5, okay? Always have a clear plan. When you play chess, think clear, okay? And pay attention to the loose pieces. Again, identify the loose piece, which is the bishop on e3. Start looking for tactics when you see a loose piece here. And then things like this will come into hand. When you look for these tactics, 95 ideas, you will see this, okay?